so hello everyone my name is jalai pandya and you must be thinking that when the entire world is working from home why this gentleman is in this tie suit jacket everything but this is not for you actually this is for my wife because my wife thinks that i am not working so i thought let me make her feel that i am working but joke apart why i decided to come in my normal attire because i thought that what if somebody has invited me and uh, if i am speaking to a august audience of 100 150 people in some conference will i go in my uh, uh, shorts and a t-shirt no that's not the answer and that is why i decided to come and present to you like this so are we all ready can you please raise your hands i can see couple of hands are raised yes so i can see many people are raising their hands good so i think we are good to go i'm sure most of you are used to a kind of a zoom meeting or some other platform where uh, it's a two way communication it it is also going to be a two way communication but to make it easier for everyone what we are going to do is as of now we are keeping all of you on mute and once i finish my session and once we move forward then we will definitely have a question and answer session where we talk to each other so let me quickly take you through what i wanted to share with you today yeah so i just want to uh, in the beginning i would like to thank cii and cii young indian and uh, this webinar has been uh, in a joint association with yii and cii so while uh, many or more people are joining in uh, i would like to quickly understand this particular audience and uh, what i am going to do is i am going to throw some poll in on your screen and you just have to answer uh, on your screen so that i can understand you know that uh, how the particular mix is so here we go uh, this is the first question i would like to ask all of you please answer which sector are you working in can you please quickly answer i can see few people are waiting they are voting interesting good so let me show you the result of our quick poll and as you can see that 42% of you are from manufacturing 38% of you are from services there are 2% of you you are from academia and there are 15% they are from other so maybe they are a student or they are working with something which they are not clear with so i can see there is a good mixture of audience what we have today we have around 100 august people joining this webinar i am glad that you helped us to mark a century and uh, this is where we are so moving forward let me share another poll with you which will help me to further understand you better and the scenario better so as per your best judgment by when economy in general will start to showing some positive traction let's see how do you feel my request to all of you is can you please vote so that we can understand 
what do you feel by when economy in general will start to swing up some positive traction good and yeah many people many people are still voting good and here is the result most of us are very pessimistic and worried about what is going to happen next and most of us 53 percent of us 52 percent of us are thinking that it takes more than three months or it takes more than a quarter for economy to show some positive traction towards progress and maybe this is the reason we all are here today because we all want to find that magic formula of how to bounce forward in this tough time that 27 percent of us try to be realistic and they are saying three months there are around 19 percent optimistic people like me who thinks that it takes one or two months and things would be back to normal good so with this uh, as now i have your attention let me quickly take you through today's topic and the today's topic is bounce forward being agile in adversity now whenever we talk about coming up or maybe rises from the ashes we all are talking about bounce back but i i can say that we should not only bounce back but then we should bounce forward and how to do it i will quickly tell you so before we move forward let me quickly share some uh, webinar controls with you so that it would be much easier for you to ask the question wherever you feel so so this is how your screen will look like from here you can type your question and answer as and when you feel that you have some question please type in so that when we take a question and answer session I can answer it one by one. So please, as and when you feel like, you just write down your question and then I will try and answer for the, everyone. Then the second function, which is poll, which you have already seen, this is how the poll will come up to your screen. And the third is, if you have some question, if you want to say something, you just have to raise your hand from here. Good. So moving forward, let me tell one interesting story with all of you and this is a story of a true champion i am sure many of us i think most of us are very well versed with the name called usain bolt but this is a story of a champion before the usain bolt era this is the story of my dear friend wilfred bungay the gentleman in the center, you can see here, he is a 800 meter Olympic gold, uh, gold medal winner in 2008 Beijing Olympic. And today I would like to share his story with you. And I have been told this story none other than Mr. Wilfred Bunge himself when I met him first time somewhere around 2011, 2012 in Kenya and afterwards we became a good friend now why i have selected this story because it is very apt in this particular scenario so wilfred bungay came from a, a small village in kakamega region of kenya and he came from extreme poverty and from there he practiced well he, he performed well and then by 2002, 2003, he became world number one. And everybody was like, this particular Olympic in 2004 in Athens, Wilfred is going to win the gold medal in 800 meters. All the statistics, all the condition was in his favor. Everybody was betting on Wilfred that the world number one in 2004 Olympic is going to get the gold medal. And what happened? 
when the final of 2004 800 meter uh, race happened wilfred bungay stood fifth can you imagine a world number one stood fifth it is like everything was going smooth and suddenly from nowhere there is a coronavirus and everything comes to a standstill isn't it isn't it sound interesting that exactly what happened with my dear friend wilfred bungay in 2004 and all the sponsors they all pulled back suddenly from that uh, fame he came back to nowhere he doesn't have sponsor he doesn't have a proper training gear and what to do everyone was saying he has done something wrong everyone was started talking against him media was coming up with big reports that why he failed but this particular gentleman mr wilfred bungay has that mental resilience he decided that come what may i will come back i will quickly come back and i will become world number one and i will win the gold for my country and with that same persistence he started practicing he started practicing in the rough trails of kenya and 2006 he became a part of a 800 meter relay race team which still holds a world record after 14 years and from there he has never seen back come 2008 beijing olympic he won the gold medal in 800 meters along with his another colleague from kenya who won the bronze medal so why i shared this story with you because this is the story of a common man this is the story everybody can relate to in our case as well everything was going smooth we all are working our bed we are all busy uh, earning our bread and suddenly from somewhere this corona threat came in and everything came to standstill so we all, like if athletes can come back and if the athletes can again win why can't we as a businessman can do these things why can't be that corporate athlete and that's why i said that we should all not only bounce back but we have to bounce forward and that's what i'm going to talk in next couple of slides so what i have done is while i was thinking about what i should speak i have come up with four bounce so in four steps how you can bounce forward and not bounce back so let me share you my first bounce my first bounce is crisis creates opportunity when there was a crisis in the life of wilfred bunga he consider it as an opportunity now, as we all have the crisis called Corona threat and COVID-19, we should all identify that what all opportunities we have in this particular crisis. So the first thing I would like to share all with all of you is that subvert the paradigm. You are not alone. Many people are always thinking what will happen. My business is not working. Everything comes to a standstill. I have to pay my bills. I have to pay salary. But believe me, first of all, be positive and think that you are not alone. Everyone is facing the same challenges. And I'm sure our gov all governments across the world are working towards solving this problem. While what we should focus upon is that in this crisis or when this crisis gets over, what opportunities light lies ahead. So support the paradigm that you are alone believe in yourself there is no option to mental resilience you have to believe in yourself that this shall pass to larger bank i will succeed so first of all you should have that self-confidence or belief in yourself that whatever happened happened but then we should move forward now when you 
really want to create that opportunity for you and your businesses, what you need to have is, I can say, a PhD degree to create those opportunities. Now, what is that PhD? Am I asking you to get a doctorate degree? No. What I mean here by PhD is, first of all, you should have that passion. You should have that passion to make a difference. You should have that confidence that, no, I'll come out of it. Second is hunger. How badly you want to win? How hungry you are to win? How hungry you are to succeed? How hungry your teams are? So you have to have that positive hunger along with passion. And when there, there is a passion and when there is a hunger, the most important thing you need in life is discipline. You have to be persistent in whatever you are doing. You should not practice procrastination. You should not practice anything else. Many coaches, gurus, your personal trainers, your gym instructor, everybody is talking about persistence. And the same thing is also applicable to a corporate athlete like you. You should have to have a discipline in whatever you are doing. It should not be that it, I can do something on a some day or a some hour of the day. But once you decided to work on something with that same passion and hunger, you should practice it day in, day out, and opportunities will automatically evolve. So my first bounce, which I would like to share with you is that crisis creates the opportunity. Now let's move forward. I would like to share my bounce number two. Nurture a winning team. Can you see this picture? Do I have to explain anything? I think this is the picture after India won the champion's trophy. And look at that uh, passion, the hunger to win among our players. They all are come from a humble background. None of them have a legacy of maybe their fathers were cricketer or not. But still, and how it is possible? It's all because of the captain. And you are the captain of your business. The way over the period of time, Indian cricket team has been nurtured by likes of Saurav Ganguly to Mahindra Singh Dhoni to uh, Virat Kohli. Everyone has a different style. Everyone has a different way of doing things. But there is one thing in common is they have nurtured a winning team. They have instilled that faith and positivity among the Indian team that come what may, whether it is Australia or whether it is Pakistan, we have to win and we can win. I want you to instill the same passion and same hunger in your team as well. And that is why I'm saying that it is very important to nurture a winning team. Now, when I say to nurture a winning team, I am not saying that you hire a new people or you hire a new workforce. No. But how you can instill that belief in your own existing team and that's what matters the most. And that is why you have to nurture a winning team. Now, how to do it? I have a few pointers for you. The most important and one of my favorite is... Proximity is power. There is an old adage which says that you are the average of five people around you. So if you have that winning attitude, if you have that passion and hunger, it is contagious and automatically your people will reflect your passion and hunger in whatever they are doing. So when the proximity is power and when you are the one who is always around the proximity of your people and the team, it is up to you how you can leverage that and instill that passion and hunger in your team. So proximity is power. So first of all, you have to be uh, a positive. You have to be firm. You have to show that mental resilience. Otherwise, it can create a, a kind of different impact on your people. Imagine a day when you yourself are sad, 
you yourself are not confident and you are talking to your team that aaj to market dubne wala hai aage mujhe kuch dikh nahi raha hai what happened what kind of vibes you are transferring from you to your team automatically they will also slowly and gradually becoming negative so it is more important for you to maintain that calm and composure and lead the team remain enthusiastic and nurture optimism you have to be you have to remain op- enthusiastic and you have to nurture optimism slowly and gradually in among your team that this shall pass to and we'll have a brighter future the third most important thing is identify your true north i know this word true north is a cliche but what i would like to uh, kind of highlight here is that after this particular corona thing ends and when we are back to normal many people our business plans which are already tumbled down many people have five years down vision mission everything the business plan but what i want you to do is that quickly gather your teams quickly gather your leadership team and say hey whatever happened happened let's actually work out and see how we want to see next 12 months how we want to see the next one year and it could not be a big structured exercise maybe just quickly gather your team and say okay fine okay as a team we are deciding that maybe this year we want to increase our top line by 20% it could be as simple as that but when you involve your team everybody is aligned everybody is aware that this is what we want to achieve this is what we are coming and working here for because i have seen this problem in most of the smes that many a time the top management or the owners are not effectively communicating what they want to achieve in next one year or a one quarter or a two quarter they try to hide things and then what happen is people become clueless and end of the day that blame game starts and then the blame has been passed to the team in the next line of hierarchy now this is very dangerous so what i would like to share with you is that you identify your true north align your teams and you hold a shared vision most importantly you are the captain of your ship you are the captain of your business lead from the front if required show them the example lead by example sometimes lead from the back maybe you just have to give them a push tell them don't worry i am there you work push them from the back give them a support tell them you are behind them and sometimes you have to lead from within what i mean to say within is be the part of the team work together as a team member so based on the requirement you if you really want to nurture a winning team you have to lead from the front back and within and most importantly celebrate small wins i think this is very crucial if you want to nurture a winning team you have to let them test that blood you have to let them understand the the probability of success you have to allow them to taste that smaller successes many time i have seen that the way we are designing our goals the the way we are designing our targets those targets are not for the achievement but it is for make sure that they don't achieve it now if you continuously try to do that slowly and gradually people get demotivated and they then they start thinking that whatever they give anyway i'm not going to achieve it so why should i put those efforts so the point i wanted to make is if you really want to nurture a team a winning team you you set a smaller milestone even initially if possible give them give them slightly lower targets and let them celebrate those small wins let them enjoy that victory and that will instill the confidence that if i can win here i can win the larger battle too and that's how you are going to nurture a winning team so bounce number 2 bounce number 1 was what 
it's about creating those opportunity during the crisis and bounce number two is once you have the opportunity the first and foremost thing is you have to nurture a winning team because if you don't have a team or let's say if you are a captain of an army and if you don't have a soldiers to fight on the ground you cannot win this battle alone so it is very important for you to nurture a winning team now let's move forward the third and the most important part of this particular discussion is let's race with race and what i mean by race i would like to share with you a race framework now here is my race framework where r means reduce a means augment c means create and e means eliminate now why i am saying let's race with race because the time is tough we do not have time on our side the the many things are changing the things which was relevant maybe one month back it became completely irrelevant now so in this tough time it is kind of a crucial for you to work on this race framework reduce augment create and eliminate now what does it mean and how it works i will quickly take you through in in this uh, next slide okay so basically what i want you to do is we all have time now you all are digitally connected so maybe you can quickly assemble few key members from your team and you can do start doing a online brainstorming and see that how i can become more relevant when the market opens up if you can have the framework ready if you have the plan in place then automatically you will have an edge so just by working on this race framework believe me that you, what you are going to do is going to make a huge difference when somebody is there and and when the market opens so how to work on this framework or well, let me first of all explain that how what does it all mean now i can see even from our earlier survey that maybe around 50 to 53% of us are from manufacturing so we have one or other product uh, to sell with or maybe there are around another 42% so majority of them are either from manufacturing or services so the another 42% are from services so we have some or the other services which others are also offering i am not alone in the market i hardly enjoy monopoly in today's world so what i have to do is i have to quickly assemble my team and i have to work on this race framework so what race is all about so first of all when i say reduce what you have to do is that you have to come together and identify that which all factors in my product and services should be reduced well below industry standard now let me explain you this with a kind of so basically this race framework will help you to map your product and services against your competitors and then it will also force you to think that how i can execute my business differently with the same product or with the same services so that i can have an edge so what i can reduce maybe if i can give you an example from a airline industry where one of the major cost uh concern is a turn around time for any flight now what is turn around time say for example if the flight is landing to amdabad the clock starts and then there are disembarkation of the people then the cleaning people they come and clean the uh, kind of uh, the interiors the chairs they reset everything they refuel their uh, food stuff they refuel their tanks then they check the boarding in people comes in until the time the flight takes off that entire time is called turn around time and 
and historically the larger the turnaround time the higher the cost you are incurring so nowadays what airlines are focusing upon is they are focusing upon the reducing that particular turnaround time because every minute the flight is on the runway on the airport they have to pay to the airport authority so you can see how quickly they are doing their stuff how orchestrated it is so this is one of the example like what i can reduce similarly whatever product and services you have you do little bit of a brainstorming and you're coming up with a long laundry list that what are the things i can reduce which is not going to affect my products quality the second example or the second uh, uh, thing is augment which factors should be augmented well above industry standard what does it mean that if there are some services or some features are already there but how i can further augment it or how i can further raise the bar so that i can have an example now this remind me an example of my childhood days when i was a kid there was a kind of advertisement for one of the color company and that advertisement is like mera wala pink now what does it mean earlier also there were many many uh, uh, color shades or shades of pinks were available at the shops but then always what pink i want that was not in the stock or there was a higher lead time so then company came uh, put their heads together and they did some delayed differentiation they came up with some digital machine so based on the code i put it mixes in that particular uh, uh, proportion and i can get mera wala pink all the time from the same particular hardware shop so what they have done they have augmented that experience they have raised that experience and there was a phenomenal results attached to it now what c means c means create which factor should be created that industry has never offered and what other example i can give than an ipod isn't it because it was never thought about that a small device a small digital device will can hold maybe thousands of songs maybe uh it can i can shuffle it i can do so many things and then i don't have to buy the physical records i can download it from the internet or from the itunes stores so they have created a different experience which was never offered by that particular industry yeah and so so that is another classic example of create and the last one is eliminate now what you can eliminate which factors which industry has long competed on should be eliminate again if i take an example of ipod earlier i if i want to listen to one particular song then maybe either i have to buy a full record or a maybe a cassette for that one particular song and i do i never wanted to kind of pay for another five six songs but there was no other option so they eliminated it they created a, a itunes stores and i can download as small quantity as one particular song and that is not pirated it is authentic so these are the couple of example of the race framework or it is reduce augment create and eliminate so what i want you to do is that my bounce three let's race with race now we all have time we all are under lockdown for next particular at least 10 15 days if not more let's digitally connect with our immediate team and let's come up with an idea of what are the things we can raise augment create eliminate from our offerings so how to do it brainstorm with your team and list out all the probable actions for either raise uh, a kind of reduce augment create eliminate 
now many time you may come up with a question that but i am not getting something to eliminate it's fine leave it blank but at least identify for the remaining three then why i am saying all the probable actions because don't kill the idea at the beginning itself tell your team that without having constraint let first of all list down what are all probabilities we have in our offering which either we can Uh, reduce or augment or create or eliminate have that big long list it will also force your team to think once that probable list is there identify few high impact actions remember the power of few many time we have a list of 20 items and then we get into a multitasking and we end up achieving nothing so what i can suggest is identify not more than 5 6 particular high impact action and start working towards it then the third thing you can do is you can create a 13 week detailed action plan why i am saying 13 week weeks because again i don't want that punch varshi a yojana you just plan for the next quarter the time is so dynamic that come what may we never know what is going to happen in next quarter how many of us was so serious that corona would be so big somewhere in december 19 i guess 90% of us were not serious about it and see what happened in this one quarter so just create a specific action plan for next 13 week and when i say detailed it should have a very detailed action plan which says what needs to be done who will take the ownership of getting the task completed and by when by what date we are going to complete this task if these three things are there then we can have the review okay then another most important things you have to work on is that how are you going to monitor the success the one thing is that any target any goal you take it should be objective and not subjective and that is why i say if you want to kind of uh, start measuring it if you want to improve it so it is crucial that you have certain kpis your objective your key results in place which are measurable which are objective so that you can track the progress and then you create a structured review because many time we are good at making plans but then what happen we are waiting for that quarter or that half year or a year to end and then we get into a kind of a post mortem mode sorry to use this word but we are actually doing post mortem in most of the industry that what went wrong by that time that time has already passed so can we have a kind of a structured review mechanism that may be the plant level team can weekly review their action maybe the the middle management will review every 15 days and there would be a one review meeting with the leadership team or with the owner or director once a month so even if some corrective measures are required we cannot we would have not waited for that quarter to end but then we can take immediate action this reviews are very very important so if you really want to kind of race then you have to work on this r a c e you reduce you augment you create you eliminate so this is my third bounce for you and this is the last and the fourth bounce leverage the positivity to fuel the success now what i would like to share with you is that show your team the big picture first effective communication is the key now here i would like to kind of give you a, a small example how many time you have been to a great restaurant and even before placing the order you have handed over the tip of say 100 rupees if you have not done it you can anyway you are going to give a tip isn't it but then 
it is not clear for the waiter that what I am going to get. Now next time when you go to the hotel, you call that captain and hand him over the 100 rupees and see that how your entire experience is being changed. How good service you are going to get. Similarly, if we really want to nurture that winning team, we have to show them the big picture first that if we achieve so and so things, this is what you are going to get. This is what you can achieve. If that end result is clear, you can see the positivity in themselves and you can see how their actions and the behavior is slowly and gradually changing towards achieving those targets. Many times I have seen in especially in SME that the boss will call someone and say you do this and you will get something. Now what that something is all about? What I am saying is it is not always a financial benefit. Even the pet in the back. But then what is more important is that you make it clear. I will give you one more example that we are working with one of our client in overseas and they have a fantastic practice for that they have a team targets quarterly targets and they have a small canteen so the team which wins that particular quarterly target the number one team that particular day a chairman will serve them the lunch from the same canteen now imagine that a workman is being served by chairman. It is a matter of pride for him. It is a kind of a big moment of his life that the chairman of this company is so big that he is going to serve me a lunch today. Now, this is a small gesture, but a gesture, but what they have done, they have made it public. From day one, they say, if you win this, this is what you are going to get. And, and they can see a phenomenal change in the behavior of people. So show your team a big picture first. Second most important thing is that create a cross-functional customer success team to identify ways of creating customer delight. In today's world, satisfaction doesn't guarantee customer loyalty. If the customer is satisfied, he will only be with you till the time he doesn't have a better option. So what you have to do is if you really want to retain the customer and delight them because you are as good your customers are. So you have to create a cross functional team and they should separately work on finding different way of delighting customers so that you can have a long list of loyal customers. So create a customer success team so that you are also leveraging that positivity among your customer. They are your best mouthpiece. They are your best marketeers, not your sales manager. But if a customer is delighted and if he'll share his story with 10 different people, there are good chances you'll get more business. So always work toward customer success and create a customer success team. Have a morning hurdle. 10 minutes standing meeting with your leadership team and give them a positive push to achieve the result. Now every morning imagine that you as a business owner you are having a standing meeting. Why I am saying standing meeting? Because if it's a seating meeting we get into our con uh, comfort zone and maybe if a meeting lasts more than 20 minutes it turns into a kind of a conference half of them are busy replying their emails on their phones and your their laptop so it is not at all productive so to move make it productive have a standing meeting with your leadership team your production head your maintenance head your finance head your hr head and you or any other head you want to involve Give them a positive push. Tell them that you are there. You are there to support and push them positively to achieve the result. Create that positivity in the morning and it will not take more than 10 minutes. Believe me, if you do it every day, 10 minutes are more than enough. Give them that positive vibe and you can start seeing the difference. And establish 
a structured reward and recognition mechanism to promote transparency. Now, many times people feel biased that he got something because he is a favorite or a blue-eyed boy. I am not getting if I am working hard. So to eliminate that subjectivity, you should have a structured reward and recognition mechanism. And you can and that is would help you to promote transparency and further spread positivity. So my bounce number four to you is that leverage positivity to fuel success. So what I would like to tell you is that the time is tough for everyone. You are not alone. And what I want you to do with my four bounces, I want you to bounce forward and not back. So what are those four bounces? Remember one thing, crisis creates opportunity. So try and find positive things in whatever you are doing and try and identify those opportunities you can work upon. Bounce number two, nurture a winning team. If you want to win the battle, you need a strong team with that winning attitude. So it is important to nurture a winning team. Point number three, let's race with race. Yeah, you have to work on your what you can reduce, augment, create, eliminate. And the fourth one is, or the bounce four is, leverage positivity to fuel success. So in a nutshell, what I want you to do is to be a corporate athlete and bounce forward now why i'm saying you have to be a corporate athlete because what we can see in that 800 meters and 400 meters and all those sprint is actually a result and a hard work of maybe years and years they have planned for each and every millisecond they have planned each and every move and now as we have the time, as we all are sitting idle at home, we have hardly anything to work upon. If we can give some thought to all those four pointers and if you can assemble your team digitally and work on that race framework, you are ready. So when the market opens, when the things will improve, I can guarantee you that, that you will have an edge and you will bounce forward and not bounce back. Thank you very much for listening me. With now we can take some question and answer. Good. So what you can do is I, I'm still sharing my screen. Yeah. So uh, you can ask me the question if if you have anything. Yeah. Okay, so uh, kind of somebody say is okay. It's a compliment. I appreciate your full formal get up. This is the best one from all the session I attended so far in lockdown. Inspiring. Thank you very much, sir. I really appreciate it. How to nurture and motivate the team? I think I have given the pointers. You have, but the most important thing is that you have to lead them from the front if required show them the way if required just give them a positive push and lead from the back and sometimes be part of them make sure that you also lead them from within okay uh can you share the presentation uh yes we our team is working on it after this webinar whatever email id we'll have we'll, ha we'll share some link and from there you can download it how to reduce the impact of uh, a, a layoff impact? Okay. Uh, if I understood it correctly, I think you are more worried about the, the layoff. Let me tell you some good statistics, first of all. And I, I know I am, I'm, I'm sounding a little bit um, like a saint, but I'm sure if you are from manufacturing and if you see your manpower cost, Maybe it is in single digit in terms of percentages. Then the the kind of other uh, cost what you have. 
So, and I think even the same is the case with maybe slightly higher in service industry, but then believe me that the people are your asset. Let me share one important thing with you that it is four times more costlier to kind of uh, um, uh, hire a new person and train them. So it is 80% cheaper to have existing resources. What is more important is you have to identify that in this tough time, how you being a, you know, able to be nimble and agile. You have to find a difference between what fat you have in the system and what muscle you have. For me, people are like a muscle of my system. I will try to touch it at the last, but there are lots of inefficiency or a fat in the system which you should focus upon and try to get rid of. Um, how to create and turn manager to leader? Uh, a kind of, um, yeah, it's an interesting thing. So, so what you have to do is the only way if you can create or turn manager into leader is by empowering them. Slowly and gradually try, see how you have become a driver. When you started driving a car, it was your car instructor from that driving school. He was managing those uh, particular paddles and steering while sitting next to you. And then slowly and gradually, he started giving you the steering. Then he started asking you to operate the clutch and brake, etc., etc. So the only way to turn manager into leader is slowly and gradually giving that steering wheel into their hands empower them let them uh, feel that they are special they can do it and i am sure that uh, things will slowly and gradually improve exceptional presentation and theme thank you very much how to manage team motivation and uh, of monetary impact like salary cuts as i said that yes salary cuts are affected everyone the the more important thing is they become demotivated when they do not have clarity. So my take for you is that first of all, be transparent in your communication. Tell them the truth. Tell them that uh, kind of the uh, kind of the time is tough and this is the reality. I am sure many of them will accept it and then once we are together once we have the alignment we should push them more towards working towards coming out of it uh ppt will share being a corporate athlete will stay with me thank you smita how do you reduce i think i already answer uh kaushal is asking uh, any specific way to bounce back in real estate industry uh, viral here Definitely, sir. Uh, when the time is tough and uh, especially uh, real estate industry is struggling, uh, there are different ways to improve your uh, operations, the way they are getting into uh, kind of the way the industry is operating. We can talk more uh, one to one whenever we meet. But one thing which I would like to share here is that there is something called lean construction or lean project management i think this is the key in today's time when everybody is struggling to meet the the targets and struggling to manage the cost lean construction could be very apt for you okay uh Shailesh ji is asking what if the lockdown period gets further extended uh I think no one has an answer to it so what will happen but uh, what i would like to share with you is that uh, the race framework which I have shared, this is going to be the key in today's time. When we do not have a clarity of next one year, if we can find out some different way of executing business by reducing something, by augmenting something, by creating and eliminating, then I'm sure there is a way uh, to manage this lockdown period. Just to give you an example, uh, the different way of doing things like we being a management consultant, our role was always on site. Our role was always when we go to the client site, we 
start getting uh, inputs and we start giving inputs now when when every entire world is under lockdown what to do so we came up with a kind of a solution that we identified that what are the things we can do it remotely when even client have time to work upon and there are a couple of our clients they are into essential services so they are working and needing our support like pharma like fmcg so we moved our entire consulting on a kind of a digital platform now how good bad ugly i am not the right one to comment but it is working for our client so we all have to i think that is the experience we have created so we all have to work towards this we are in a traditional wholesale market the people working for us are also traditional and laid back can we use this model for such a situation as well absolutely sir it is applicable anywhere and as i said that you are the captain of the ship you have to lead them by example you have to empower i can why i can relate is because my family business is also a traditional wholesale so i have seen my brothers my fathers very closely the way they are operating and managing so uh, you have to lead and you have to empower them uh, in this uh, ah, there are so many questions and it's still flooding like anything so in this time we have lost many days now customer will force us to hurry how to handle it the best way to handle is is being agile and nimble working on your productivity your quality your cost and your on time delivery we can discuss in detail what specific requirement you have and i can help you out uh, what we can do when the leader don't accept any ideas or suggestions maybe i can say the way we are communicating should be changed but generally what happen is i will tell you that uh, a kind of leadership in any organization is like a let me draw something for you something like this it's a bell shaped curve can you see it yeah so maybe there are 10 percent here they are a kind of positive people there are 10 percent here they are kind of very stubborn and negative and this middle 80 percent are fan sitters they are just waiting for the which side the flow is my kind of uh, answer to you is quickly is find out those 10% positive uh, positive people start working with them automatically that remaining 80% fan sitter will come this side and it will help you to kind of uh, get a mass and move forward and many time even those stubborn people changes uh, do you conduct regular webinars regularly yes shil we are conducting it regularly and we'll share more detail as and when come how to keep motivated which is restless and bored as work gets less and less even to work from home yeah it's true shailesh ji we all are getting bored and maybe one of the best way is to attend uh, good webinars and I, i i hope that you all like this webinar uh neeraj is saying bigger challenge for the industry is to face the time after the closure down the next three months post this will be deciding time for respective entities fortune very true neeraj bhai very true and that is why i say that if you continue doing what you used to do there are there are not even a good chances that you will get the same result the result is even less than what you used to get so the the key is identify newer way of deliver the your goods and services the newer way of doing things and i am sure this race framework will help you to uh, a brainstorm and push you forwards according to you uh, what will be the impact of promo on promotional budget for the companies going forward well it depends completely on uh, industry to industry so it i cannot have any generic comment but if you can share the industry i can kind of give you can you give a little more detail view on a customer delight definitely i will share my coordinate mr sabu and then we can talk i can give you pointers we have limited time uh keep the moment after that will be critical very true excellent points uh okay 
one last question i will pick one random question of uh, with all of you what do, do you think that automobile industry will face with the technology challenges from bs4 to bs6 needs larger amount of capital yes i think i have read somewhere i am not sure but government has kind of allowed uh, some more breather for bs4 vehicle to be uh, you know sell off and this is a much larger problem but then it it was an inevitable form of bs6 due to kind of uh, uh, this environmental impact and everything it's a huge topic you know it cannot be kind of i cannot give you in, in one uh, line but uh, what i will do is we can catch up later and we can talk i'm i'm i really look forward to because as some shailesh bhai was mentioning everyone is getting bored you can call me any time i'm going to share my coordinates and we can have a, a much uh, detailed uh, kind of a discussion uh, Uh, a kind of what kind of a curve do you expect i presume that it is like post this uh, kind of uh, uh, this particular thing gets over if you ask me it it's going to be a, i am optimistic that it is going to be a hockey stick there would be a slight downfall but then it is not going to last longer so uh, it is going to be a kind of an hockey stick thank you very much i really enjoyed it guys and believe me it was a house full today believe me and uh, thank you very much cii and young indian for collaborating with us what i want to do is so here are my coordinates you can call me at 999986600 here is my email id jalip at faber infinite you can get in touch with me on twitter at jalip or you can get in touch with me on linkedin we'll share this presentation as and when possible my team is working on it but meantime feel free to get in touch and i would love to help i would like to leave you with this the first step towards getting somewhere is to decide you are not going to stay where you are this is very apt in today's situation so my humble request is to decide that you are not going to stay where you are today be that corporate athlete have that mental resilience and i am sure table will turn soon with this i would like to leave you with this small poll how are you rating the session can you please rate where from 1 to 10 and uh, 10 is excellent one is very poor so i would be more than happy to receive your feedback i'm getting it Forty-one. So I'm keeping the poll open so that I can get some good starts. I think we are done. So thank you very much. I'm glad you liked it. It is nine point three out of ten. So I think I've done my job. Thank you very much. Stay safe. be at home and uh, be that corporate athlete thank you very much guys